All right, how's everyone doing? Good, how are, how are you? you? How are you? How are you? I'm here. So first of all, I want to thank uh, Coach Eberflus, Ryan Poles, Kevin Warren, and of course the McCaskey family for making me part of this great organization and, and storied franchise. Couldn't be more excited about it. You know, when the, the job process started and, and the interview process started, uh, you know, it became obvious pretty quickly for me what direction I wanted to take this thing and, and, and really go after this job, getting to know those people, how well they interacted together. Uh, so fortunate that it all worked out and, and I'm totally appreciative of it. Um, from an offensive standpoint, you know, I'm looking forward to a group that can put together a great effort on the field, display great toughness, and then work well together. And so we put together a staff that we feel like can really, you know, encapsulate all those traits, everything that we're looking for. And, you know, with that being adaptable, you know, it's a game where things change, players change. Can we adapt? Can we overcome certain situations? And I feel like we have that. For as far as, uh, you know, my family did, Eric did a great job talking about his you know, I can't be more excited about getting my wife, Megan, my daughter, Lainey, my other daughter, Riley, out here, being part of this community and, uh, you know, excited for it, excited to make it part of this, this great area and this great fan base. So with that, I'll open it up and hear what you guys have. When, sure. when, Matt, when, when Matt interviewed you uh, both times uh, and when, you know, you talked to people in the building here, how much the conversation was about what you would do with Justin and how much was what you would do with maybe a college quarterback who's going to be available. Sure. I think, you know, just from a player standpoint in general, a lot of the conversation on offense revolved around, you know, adaptability. What, what can you do with, you know, different pieces of the puzzle, depending on each year, each year in this league is going to be its own individual year. And I think priding ourselves on having an offensive system, uh, a group of coaches that can adapt and, and, and adjust the scheme to the player's skill set. you know, cause it's our job to first to be great teachers, and then second, to be able to put guys in the right position, in the best position for their own individual success to lead to our team's success. So a lot of the conversation revolved around not just the quarterback position, obviously that's a, a starting point on offense, but how does that look for every position as team and, and as teams adapt each year and as players adapt each year? How do you go about planning an offense, though, at this point when you don't know? Maybe you do, but like at least right now, yeah. quarterback could be a couple of different. There you go. Uh, no, I think you know as far as planning the offense, the first part for us was building a staff, getting everyone together, and then you know you have staffs. So we've worked together with different people in the past. Uh, people have had different experiences, but the first part of that is really speaking our language. You know, what's the 2024 Bears uh, going to look like in terms of how we're calling certain coverages, how are we calling routes? You know, what concepts do we want to you know uh, have as part of our core offense when we start OTAs and we start with that building block building block approach as teachers. So that's the first part of it. And to me, you know, having a system that's that's speaking the same language, that's multiple in its ways that it can attack a defense, you know, then you start to get the players and you start to know what your personnel is going to look like for that season. And then you build it around the player's skill set. And I think, you know, for me, uh, that's been a part of my core beliefs. And I feel like it's it's worked out well with the different quarterbacks that I've had a chance to be around over the past several years. Is it safe, is it safe to say this is an offense, though, whether it's Justin or a college quarterback that, you know, to be named later, that could work for either one of them? Yeah, I, I totally believe that. You know, I think in the in the past experiences, like I said, with with different quarterbacks, different experience levels, uh, whether I was in the coordinator role or in a in a role uh, as a position coach, you know, I felt that way. I felt different quarterbacks have been able to uh, to step foot into the system, be able to uh, to learn it quickly. You know, and that starts with us being able to teach it in a good and efficient man, uh, manner where they understand it, and then being able to go and and again adjust because. Each guy's going to have a different skill set. So, what direction does it go? Uh, it's you know the players really take ownership and control of that. Okay. So, who's here already that you like that you're excited about coaching? Who's already in place personnel wise? No, well, I think the big thing is just in big picture because without getting into specific personnel uh, uh, talk right now, because it's, it's an you know, ever. Uh, changing scenario, especially this time of the year with free agency, and we know that. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited about some of the explosive playmakers, some of the core foundational pieces that we have up front, uh, and then, you know, some of the toughness in the runners, things that they've displayed on tape right there. Uh, and obviously at the quarterback position with that ability to be explosive, to be a playmaker, uh, to work off schedule, you know, those things are all uh, good pieces to a, to an offense that, that really finished strong last year. And, and, and I'm looking really to see how can we as an offensive staff look to build upon 
beyond that? How do we incorporate our system with a bunch of great players that that have had success in this league? And like I said, getting getting a, getting a, a chance to look forward at, at how we come together in this thing, you know, and, and the individuals will will kind of put their best foot forward as we get to it, as we get to know them better. Um, I do think, you know, one part for me is, you know, this is a business, there's a business time of year, but it's a relationship based business. And for me as a coach coming in, you know, the best chance to start developing those real relationships is when OTAs get going, when the off season program begins, when we get a chance to, you know, outside of being able to reach out to guys and just say hello to introduce myself, you know, get a chance to spend time with them, get them a chance to know our coaches, you know, you know get a chance to know them uh, outside of just football X's and O's. Cause I think once we know each other, once you do develop relationships with, with people, uh, which I said is, like I said, is an in-person thing in my mind, uh, then you get a chance to really coach them harder, coach them better, understand how they work and how we would interact together. Part of, part of the homework for this organization in the weeks ahead is figuring out the quarterback situation. When you presumably will have input on the quarterback draft class, what are your early impressions of Caleb Williams and who he is as a prospect? Yeah, I think, you know, from afar, you know, mainly my, my impression of a lot of these quarterbacks, all the college quarterbacks was, you know, what an unbelievable college season we just came, you know, off of with these guys making some of these dynamic plays down the stretch, you know, whether it was leading into the, the championship games or, or the, the bowl games leading up to that, the regular season. Obviously, for me, being out on the West Coast, get a little bit of uh, more exposure to the Pac-12. Uh, I guess the, yes, Pac-12 still last year, you know, as that thing <laughs> evolves every uh, every day in my mind. Uh, but so, you know, just in, in terms of that, it's been more of, you know, generality, seeing all these guys perform at a high level under the national spotlight, especially there's, a, you know, multiple quarterbacks that have already performed on the highest stage, you know, in big games. And obviously he's one of them. And, and I'm excited to really, you know, when we start this afternoon with some of our draft process, then the combine kicks off, you know, to me, that's the chance to really dive into this and, and get going. When, when you dive into the, the pre-draft process from your role, what are the things that excite you most, whether it's pro days, combine visits, what are the things that, that are compelling to you in, in this next stretch of homework? Yeah, I think getting to know the person. You know, and, and all these guys that everyone's got a story, you know, cool thing about football is everyone has such a unique and, and different background and, and what led them, what's their why, how did they get to this point? And so, you know, the tape is obviously their resume in terms of the player, but then what is, you know, what is the person like? How is that person going to be able to adjust and, and adapt to the next level here? And, and so for me, you know, like the combine's that first chance to start to see some people in person, start to get a chance to, you know, in a shorter time span, interview people, and then putting in all the information that, that Ryan Poles and his staff has gathered in terms of the, the, uh, the off the field, you know, what the character of the player is and all those things. So I'm excited to get to know those guys, like I said, outside of just, you know, the, the, the great displays they put up every Saturday afternoon or Saturday night or maybe Tuesday night, some action, you never know. So, uh, no, getting to those guys would be a good thing. Geno Smith, Gino Smith had a resurgence under you in Seattle. How much pride do you take in getting the most out of a quarterback? And just generally speaking, what would you say is the key to developing a quarterback and getting the most out of them? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, my experience with Geno was unbelievable. It started with him as a player, and I think, you know, you talk in terms of what guys can learn from him was a unique ability – to have a positive mindset no matter what the scenario was. And, and when I got a chance to start working with him, you know, there was an unwavering mindset that he was a starting quarterback in the NFL, which I think is part of the process or, or part of the thought process that every quarterback and every player in this league is going to have. And so to get it, uh, you know, to be lucky enough to work with a guy like that that had that mindset uh, and then to be able to start to develop that relationship with him, that rapport uh, where we can get into game day and, and feel like, hey, we're on exactly the same page on everything that's going on. I think that was uh, something that I would take from that, uh, that moment with him. And, and again, looking forward to it, and you'll hear me, you know, refer to it, you know, a good amount of times. But to me, the the teaching, the coaching, it all starts with how well you're getting to know these guys. You know, what's the relationship like with them? And not to say that everyone's going to have the exact same relationship with every single player, you know. And and I think, but having that that understanding of their why, and and really, like I said, seeing Gino, how he worked, how he was. Uh, totally dialed in no matter what the scenario was, whether he was going to be the starter that week, whether he was a backup when I was first around him, you know, that was unwavering and his confidence uh, from that was unwavering. You came into this process, you came into this process as one of the hot names in this hiring cycle that would have options to, to choose from. As an OC, obviously the quarterback situation for any franchise is going to be intriguing. Do you like it or not? What do you find intriguing about the current situation that the Bears quarterback situation is in right now? Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at it from 
from either lens right now, you know, obviously it's a unique spot in the draft to have the, the first overall pick, the ninth overall pick, just from an organization in general. You know, it's not going to happen too often. Uh, and again, every year is so individually based. You know, this is that that year. And then also a core uh, a group of players that are already in place on offense, including the quarterback that played at a high level and have had to have displayed, you know, uh, the ability to win football games and 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 make plays. So I think the, the combination of those two things were really intriguing. And then, you know, you know, even furthermore than that was just the even from that initial interview, just the the uh, connection and interaction between Coach Eberflus and, and Ryan Poles and and seeing a connected organization when you walk in the building and you feel it and you start to get really excited about uh, the direction that this thing's going. Have you, have you had a chance to talk to Justin Fields yet? And are there challenges maybe that come with trying to build that relationship with his sort of uncertain future? Here? Yeah, I think whether it's with him or all these guys, you know, part of it's the rules because, you, you know, you can't go out and meet with the guys right now and, you know, we're in that, that set. Um, but, you know, trying to reach out to each guy and, you know, give that introduction uh, and then knowing that the real, like I said, the real relationships, the real conversations are, are in the future right here, you know, in the near future as, as we get ready for this thing. But, you know, leaving it in, at that with all these guys. And like I said, I can't wait to get to meet all the guys in person, get a chance to talk with them more. And, so, so, have, so have you talked to him yet or no? Yeah, we've, we've exchanged messages there. Your, your prior experience as a play caller was something that was attractive to the Bears, obviously, during this process. Where do you feel more equipped having had the experience than you did when you first started calling plays? And where, do you, where have you seen the growth in yourself in that area? That's a great question. I think, you know, as a play caller or anything you're doing, you know, for the first time, you know, you're, are you ready for it? You don't know until you do it. And then once you've done it, you've been exposed to it. I think it's all about reps, just like no different for a player. You know, the more reps you accumulate, the more situations that are put in front of you, uh, you know, the, nat the more and more natural it becomes to react uh, with, a, with a positive decision in those scenarios right there. And so for me, you know, I'll look back at this, this past season and, you know, take away the, the, uh, the amount of game winning drives that we were able to accomplish and thinking about it from the, the, the calmness as a play caller in those scenarios, taking the information in from all the other coaches, you know, everything's always going to be a, a collaborative effort in those regards, but, you know, being able to, to to understand those situations and, and react in those split seconds and, and making the best decision for the team, you know, as many times as you can throughout the course of the game. And then also realizing, you know, it's the NFL, everybody's good. So there's defenses that are going to be great every single week. And, you know, they might make a play here and there and, and being able to move on just like a player would, hey, if you make a bad play, let's move on right to the next play. That next play might be the best one of the game right there, but don't let the previous play call impact the next play call from an emotional standpoint you know and so i think as you you know the more and more reps you get at something more and more you do it the more and more comfortable i feel like i become in those scenarios you've gone go many places going to a team with the number one overall pick how attractive is that to you yeah, I think, like I said, the you know having a unique scenario like this where you have the first pick and the ninth pick in the draft uh, to get a chance to uh, to be a part of a an organization as storied as this one is, I think all those things go into it. And and like I said, you don't you know when the season ends, every season's its own entity. You don't necessarily you know you're not saying I'm anticipating what's about to happen. And next thing you know, you're here. You go. You're in the interview process. And uh, like I said, it just felt very comfortable very quickly you know with meeting those guys and then obviously having that that piece of the draft puzzle you know where you get a chance to evaluate so many top players around the college game with those those two high picks you know made it totally appealing have you evaluated Justin and what did you make of his season yeah, I think for him you know talking about individual evaluations it's been much more build the staff build our, uh, you know, base of what we're going to do. Uh, we've started to get into, you know, our personnel. We've started to really meet with the scouts and, uh, you know, having that full evaluation of what our roster looks like. And so then moving forward, you know, over the next several weeks will allow us to, you know, start to make some decisions, not just at that spot, but at, at all the spots, because you know, obviously free agency is is right in front of us right now. So being able to put all those things together uh, is all part of the process. But for us, you know, too, there's that process of having a foundation as coaches and, and knowing what we want to be how we want to present this so that when we do start talking about the players, how are they fitting in everything that we're looking to do? What was, your, what, was your, what was your pitch to get others to come join your staff? My pitch to get others to join the staff? Well, I think go back to some relationships. You know, myself and, uh, and Thomas Brown had a great experience working with him in, in Los Angeles right there. Uh, you know, same with some of our guys from that were able to uh, make their way out from Seattle with with uh, Carrie and Robbie and Chad. Uh, so that was, uh, 
you know, those were those were started with with different relationships you had with those people uh, as a starting point. But I also think we did a good job of really um, spreading the net in terms of interviewing and talking to a lot of people and, you know, getting exposed to new ideas, new thoughts, which is always a good part of the interview process. Um, and then there were some different ones that, you know, people I hadn't known, but, you know, you know, it, you know, recommendations from other people, other coaches, um, you know, bringing in, you know, Jennifer King and interviewing her uh, the other day and, and, and hearing how valuable of a piece of our staff that she will be, uh, her knowledge, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, she had worked with different people that I had worked with in the past and how highly they had spoken of her. So each staff member, you know, different different ways that they came about in terms of, you know, having a group of people you want to interview and then narrowing it down to each position specifically is is different for each person. But, you know, excited about all the people that we have on board and then getting a chance with a couple of guys with with Chris Morgan and, and Jim Dre and and Zach Cable, guys that were here already, but also had very similar outlook, similar philosophy on how we're looking at the game. Uh, so bringing everyone in together has, has been a fun process. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.